Hello ladies and gentlemen, this is your host that creepy reading and today's story the amnesia tapes now This is a story. I found on the creepypasta wiki with no credited author with that being said Let's begin My parents always used to tell me stories about my childhood that for some reason I can't exactly recall Stories about how I used to have an imaginary friend named Bilbo who supposedly, according to my childhood self, lived in the walls of his pet Axel. Whenever the hell or whatever the hell I was on that caused me to come up with this, I have no idea. But apparently I spent a lot of time with Bilbo and Axel. Because my parents always tend to bring them up whenever I visited them. <sighs> well, over a little while ago, I decided that I'd go on a little vacation. Uh, this was um, the week of Christmas in 2009. Having been working in Manhattan for the business world, making uh, well, a respectable sum of money in the upper middle class for the past several years, I decided that I might as well take a break from it all and stay at my childhood home in Pennsylvania. By the 22nd of December, I, I had made it to my parents' house, where they immediately brought me up to my old room. The moment I entered the room, a chill went down my spine. But not because of a weird, supernatural, unpleasant feeling. Mainly because of nostalgia. Which is odd, considering that I don't remember the room at all. I, I could barely remember anything from my old childhood years. I can remember back to being a teenager, which was about the time I was sent to live with my aunt because of, well, my bipolar disorder, which my parents couldn't handle anymore. But since I have that all taken care of now, there's, well, theoretically nothing to worry about. Aunt Janice was coming over for dinner at my parents' house tonight, so I could see her the first time in nearly four years. I won't lie. I, I did feel a little emotional thinking about how I uh, barely ever saw my old aging lovable relatives anymore since I got a job in Manhattan but my personal life was going good despite my so-so love life I was seeing a girl named Amanda around this time but we haven't seen each other for a few weeks due to um, her having to fly out to California to attend her uncle's funeral a roast was tonight's meal, specifically cooked by my mother. Another small thing I remember from my childhood somehow. My mother's cooking, giving a true meaning to the old saying. Just like mom used to make it. I wish Amanda could cook like that. <laughs> Her cookie's not the... Uh, <coughs> best. At the dinner table, Aunt Janice told me um, some humor stories of my childhood and the events at the house, mainly from holidays and other family gatherings. Sadly, I couldn't exactly remember physically anything from these events, which, to be honest, I mean, like, usually people can know some things that happened in their childhood, but this was getting a little eerie, so to speak. But they were humorous and entertaining to hear. After dinner, Aunt Janice had to leave, so I kissed her on the cheek, and she left. She looked good despite her growing age. She was, like, now at least well into her 70s. Put a smile on my face to see her, though, which gave me a remembrance of my pleasant teenage years living at her home in Pittsburgh. She now lives close to my parents' house since her husband, my Uncle George, passed a few years ago. Around 11 p.m., my parents went off to bed and told me that I could stay up and do whatever I needed or wanted as long as I kept the noise down. I decided to go into my old bedroom and watch some television for a bit until I got tired. So I did just that, flickering through channels to find particularly nothing entertaining. I ended up having a look around my old room as the TV played quietly in the background. I opened up the closet and found the typical objects you would find in a young boy's closet. Action figures, Legos, coloring books, all the good fun stuff. What caught my eye was a brown cardboard box in the back of the closet obscured by a pile of child clothing. I dug through the clothing and I took the dusty box out, opening up to reveal 
several VHS tapes, about six of them, all labeled with numbers that were crudely drawn in crayon, and the handwriting of what appears to be a small child. At the bottom of the box, I found a folded piece of paper that was torn from a notebook. I took the paper and unfolded it to find, written again in crayon and small child, child, children's writing, The Adventures of Bilbo and Axel. I, reckon I recognize the names of those being my imaginary friends and his pet snake. I found this incredibly interesting and possibly could help me remember something from my old childhood, or at least bring back some nostalgia. Luckily, in my room, there was also a VCR hooked up to my old 2000-style TV, standard definition, that couldn't have been used in probably, I don't know, maybe 10 years? 15? I mean, like, I'm watching cable on it now, so it hopefully should work. Uh, digging through the tapes, I dug out one labeled Hashtag One and put it in the VCR. The VCR spit out the tape and well, the VCR spit out the tape a few times and after the third or fourth time I finally popped it in and started to play. There was just some static and it was just a mess for a few seconds until it finally came on. A very young me standing in the middle of the same room that I was in now. Uh I was in, which it wasn't exactly in the same condition, however. I was just sitting with my head in my hands in the middle of the room, facing the wall, muttering some incomprehensible blabber. I figured I was maybe playing hide-and-go-seek or something of that sort, but I don't know. At this point, I got some weird vibes from the film, but I continued. After about two minutes of the blabbering, I begun to get concerned, since the younger version of me was a tad louder, but it was still incomprehensible. It sounded almost like gibberish. The sound was completely cut out, and the quality started to get really choppy. The colors started to dis distort, and I could hear a faint whispering playing over the tape. I put the volume louder so I could make out this whispery sound, but suddenly, an ear-shattering shrieking came through the static. It was extremely loud white noise. I shot up and ran over to the VCR to eject the tape, but of course the VCR ate the tape, completely destroying it. I looked in the box of the second tape and found it conveniently on the top of the pile. This was number two, written in crayon. The tape begun like the last, when it finally came in. There was absolutely no sound at all, it seemed to be a, well, continuation of the last, but I now faced in the other direction, actually looking at the camera with my head. It was seemingly odd that my head was no longer in the shoulders. My eyes had deep black rings about them, and... I looked exhausted, scared, and extremely tired. The whispering came on again, but louder, and definitely more clear than before. I could faintly make out, to my horror, the name being said in the whispers. <laughs> Patrick. <laughs> Is my tape ejected out fast. The tape ejected fast out of the VCR on its own, behind a series of magnetic tape shooting out and twisting and snapping on the floor. I won't deny the fact that I was nearly pissing my pants at this seemingly weird and random jump scare. I didn't feel like the house was normal at all, that these walls could literally talk, and that I had to lock my childhood away in my mind for some reason. Was this creature also my... Was also the cause of my teenage bipolar disorder? I, I, gra I grabbed a box of tapes and ran outside to my car, not even saying goodbye to my sleeping parents, and I drove off. I was tired, but he just had to get out of that house. I was having a mental breakdown. I, I drove off to Aunt Janice's house and told her everything, showing her the box of tape. Her face turned into a black, blank stare looking almost frightened and nervous as she told me to sit down and relax. She sat next to me holding my hand in hers and she told me the truth behind it all. The tapes 
or actually a psychiatric test of my actions due to demonic possession that may have occurred in my childhood. An exorcism was performed, which, according to her, nearly killed me. And the demon left my body. I experienced amnesia due to this, and thus was the reason why I was sent to live with my aunt Janice in the first place. I ended up returning to Manhattan, and by next autumn, Amanda and I were married. I didn't invite or tell any of my family members about the wedding, and I haven't seen my parents or Aunt Janice since that night on December, December 22nd, 2009. Still the remaining tapes of me, though. However, there's an equal part of me who is curious to watch them. However, there's also a part of me that wishes not to watch them. All I know is that what I felt in that house, it was evil. It felt nerve-wracking and disturbing. And I honestly believe that that demon may be lurking in the walls within that house. So, yeah, I, I don't think I'm going to go back. Thanks for listening to my ramblings. I just felt that I could should get this on the internet or something and that was the amnesia tapes a rather good pasta if you honestly ask me it was a rather good story it had a good plot it had some good character development i got to voice act a little bit i gotta let my vocal rain come down a bit however there were a few minor things the only thing I rather would have to say I didn't like is the fact that I feel like with the amount of things that is going on within the story, I feel that it should be a bit longer. It should have more time to flesh out the character and describe the scene, allow the ambience of the moment to begin to fill in our eyes. Uh, things kind of just escalate rather quickly, taking me out of the experience completely. However... For what it is, it has good grammar. It's it's written in a way that, you know, might actually happen. I like the story. I wish the author would have credited himself so I can be like, hey, go 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 give that guy a hug on his face. But yeah. This has been your host, that creepy reading, and I bought Destiny and I'm playing on the Xbox One and go watch my Destiny season pass giveaway video and I'm signing off. Goodbye.